today um, I will talk about um, uh, smart charging of electric vehicle and from two very different perspectives. Um, in the first part of the talk, I will uh, uh, discuss uh, how we usefully model um, electric vehicle drivers' charging choices. So we look at uh, immobility and when when uh, elect when uh, human drivers are present and how do they make these choices and and why they are important it's important to model and how do we model them in a way that we can um, in a useful way for uh, to devise smart charging strategies in the in the second part of the talk uh, we get rid of the drivers and and we consider uh, charging strategies for uh, autonomous electric vehicles because while um, electric mobility is currently and will be at least in the short, short term dominated by uh, human drivers. I mean, uh, um, autonomous vehicles are on the uh, on the horizon, especially with uh, uh, with in, in as, sure, as far as sure mobility is concerned. So, I will start giving a, a bit of uh, an introduction on. Uh, on, on electric mobility and why uh, behave, modeling behavior in this uh, context is, is important. So uh, now um, electric vehicles are uh, slowly, but they are they're becoming uh, mainstream. Uh, uh, the market share of EVs uh, 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 in Europe and in China has already reached the double digit, which means they are reaching the, the, the <clears throat> The mainstream drivers. Uh, the US um, will will reach the double digit soon, but it's not there yet. Sorry, this is the um, the market share in percentage of uh, um, <clears throat> light duty vehicles and uh, and the year of the year. So the, the last dot is uh, uh, year twenty twenty one. This data comes from IA. So we see them China and Europe. They are the past already. Uh, Ten percent, and uh, the U.S. is going uh, is also reaching up there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I'm not sure about that. I'm, uh, I don't want to speculate, uh, but uh, uh, I'm not sure about that. Possibly with the um, with the recent. Uh, 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 Money made available by the administration, uh, we, we might see something like that. I mean, uh, in uh, in in uh, in Europe and in China, there is there really were a lot of subsidies. Uh, there are, there were some uh, uh, in uh, in the U.S. too, but very different in that case. But uh, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think so too. I think so too. But you know, I'm not sure whether there's going to be a spike like this. With a, and uh, yeah, I think it's like when you said in August, there is another market mistake. Yeah, and yes, that's also that's also a good point. Mm -hmm. Like, but if we consider, uh, like for instance, Norway is a is a case apart. Now, in Norway, the market share is eighty percent, so it's, it's very is very is very very large and they've started to reduce given the the the, the high uptake they started to reduce um the subsidy you 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 have a kind of a bit of a uh, uh, you see the effect of that but i, I think uh, um it's it's minor will i i don't want to um, uh, speculate but uh i think anyway we are going in that direction undeniably and um so this uh, will bring uh, Opportunities and challenges for for power systems because challenges because we are definitely are going to increase demand uh, uh, for electricity uh, also because not only uh, transport is electrifying also heating is electrifying so so we'll have uh, we'll have an increased demand for electricity but also uh, there will be opportunity because. Uh, Vehicles are uh, electric vehicles. I don't know why. No.
Oh. Okay. Um, so as I said, so there are challenges. So if they consult as soon as they uh, um, at the end of their commute, at the end of the commute altogether, we might have spike in the in the peak demand, and uh, this is not good for power system because it means we would need uh, very to, to add very expensive uh, uh, peak generation capacity that that comes on only for a few hours of the day, and, uh, and also. Uh, just a uh, uh, few vehicles, six vehicles charging at the same time in the same street already uh, are able to congest uh, um, the transformer uh, the, on the distribution network level. So it's a problem on generation capacity, at least in certain system, but definitely is a problem at the local um, distribution network level for, for uh, if, if, they, if they charge on together. But we know, we have known actually already for over uh, 10 years that it doesn't have to be like this. We can, uh, we can uh, basically um, coordinate the charging operations but in a way that these, these peaks uh, do not form and kind of spread them around. And in fact, uh, in, not even in a certain extent, we are reaching the increasing the, the, the peak demand. Furthermore, if we have bidirectional chargers, then we can uh, go into the paradigm of vehicle to grid. We can also reduce, uh, increase the usage of renewable uh, electricity by charging when the wind blows and then, uh, you know, not charging when the wind doesn't, by, or, or even uh, selling back the electricity when the price is low, uh, sorry, when the price is high and charging when the price is low using their energy arbitrage, doing balancing services, so keeping the, the, the frequency of, uh, of the grid always constant, which is uh, always uh, um, a problem, and uh, because the, uh, the, the power system has to be balanced all the time, so in, in real time. And, uh, and also we can save on, on upgrading the network um, capacity. I mentioned before the distribution network, so. Uh, if we if we don't do anything, we need to um, uh, put down bigger cable, uh, uh, put down more transformers, and so on. But uh, if we manage the charging operation, we don't need to do that because we can avoid um, congestion. Uh, these studies that have come out in the, in the last decade or so, they, they were all based on assuming that the travel patterns were the same and the parking patterns were the same uh, as they are now. But most of all, that uh, um, if a vehicle was parked for 12 hours, all those 12 hours would be uh, um, usable for uh, um, to devise the, the smart uh, charging profile. Uh, and of course, this is a, uh, it's a reasonable assumption because 95% of the time uh, uh, a vehicle is, is parked, is not used. So there is a lot of time where it's idle and trip, trip lengths are, are typically um, smaller, much smaller than the, the available range. And so uh, it's, it's a, it's a um, reasonable assumption, but um, I argue that the, um, doing so, so considering that the, uh, that the, um, um, electric vehicles are a flexible load over the whole period that they, they are parked, is actually overestimate the potential of, of smart cars. And I'll give you a simple example. So we do a kind of a choice experiment here. So we have Emma, who is a faculty at the university of whatever, and uh, she has got a nice uh, Model 3 that she um, and she, that she drives to work, where she typically stays between 8.30 and 5, 5.15, and then she goes pick up her kid and go back home. She does not have a charger at home, but uh, um, she knows she can rely on the charger at the, at the university. And today, she really needs to charge because in the last couple of days, mm, she didn't, right? The chargers at, uh, at the university allow smart charging. Um, and uh, to minimize the charging cost and to reduce CO2 emission. Charging is free to Emma because it's a perk uh, 
for other party, party to position. But she can decide whether to allow for smart charging or not. So if she allows for smart charging, uh, she will have her uh, vehicle uh, fully charged by 5 p.m. just before she leaves. If she opts out, she can do it. Uh, she will uh, uh, have her uh, vehicle fully charged by 1 p.m. So what would you suggest her to do? In this situation, given that the, she has re regular travel patterns and so she, I would say that she could allow, uh, she could decide either way, but maybe she would go for smart charging because, uh, because of, uh, she might want to reduce the CO2 emission of her employer cleaner. Well, also, in this case, there will be Yes. Yeah. So this is Friday. So this is might be actually um, a good uh, a good point. I didn't consider that today was Friday. So I should have said on, on on Monday or something. But that's that's a good point. And it goes in in my uh, so here. If we add this information and we add further information about the driver that she is married to an emergency nurse at the hospital who's very busy all the time, and she's got her child that she goes pick up is 10 months old, and so she might receive calls from the nursery. Uh, she has a father that lives with them that is not so. So maybe in this condition and knowing that this might be a Friday, you know, the choice might be different, right? So. While, uh, so in the, if we use, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the parking to, to, to identify my smart charger parking, we, we use what we observe in National uh, Household Travel Survey or National Travel Survey diaries, I mean, we, we don't see this, right? Uh, we, this, this is unobserved. And so we, we could assume that this uh, almost, uh, what is it, almost um, um, eight, uh, eight hours are uh, are free to do smart charge, but this is not necessarily the case. And if you, for instance, if you consider that this is a bit of a extreme scenario, it's not because uh, if you, uh, I think, I think was at least one in five Americans have uh, um, uh, duty of informal carers, so they might actually need to be ready to use their vehicle. Um, in, a, in a more unpredictable way. Although uh, um, looking and they are working hours, they should, uh, it's, it's hard for, for a long time. So uh, for this reason, I, I argue that flexibility is a matter of choice. It's not something that can be just derived by looking at how long um, uh, a vehicle is parked in a, in a, in a travel survey, right? So, and it depends on the risk profile of the first situation. So the second, in the second scenarios, the risk profile became clear and was higher. Uh, on the infrastructure of an availability, for infrastructure availability constraint that you pointed out, that might vary by um, weekday and so on. And uh, in general, individual preferences and risk appetite. So um, this is just to justify that we need to look a bit beyond the, uh, simply uh, available um, travel diaries to try to understand the trade-offs that are involved in charging behavior. So that's basically the, is the justification for this uh, work that I did at Imperial. So it's based on, on, on London. Um, and it's focused on, on short-term charges by the driver. So the driver takes a number of charges. So well, whether they want or not to own an EV in the first place, uh, whether uh, they want to, or they can or want to have a uh, charging facility at home or, or work, etc. Uh, whether they want to enter into a smart charging or vehicle to grid counter, but then when they arrive at the at the charging point, they still have to decide how much energy do I want at the end of the uh, charging operation? How long do I want to wait for to have that energy within, of course. The constraints uh, uh, of the of the charger. Mm -hmm. So and and depending on their choices, their choice might be flexible or unflexible. So if we consider this graph here, uh, 
that they uh, represent in a, a bit of stylized way the the charge the the space charge. If the if the driver chooses to um, to charge uh, uh, on the maximum charging rate line, so there will be no space for the provider to do anything. In, in, whereas if he chooses um, in, in, in another part of the charge space, then the charging um, the charging service provider will have the flexibility to design a charging its charging schedule that may be optimal in some sense, right? Okay. Dr. Diana, sorry to, sorry to interrupt, but for those of us listening online, um, we can, I don't think we can hear you very clearly when you step away from the computer or the okay. podium. So I'll, I'll, I'll stay here. Sorry Thank about you. that. Sorry I, about I, that. I, I tend to move a lot. I shouldn't. You know, I, I'm sorry. Italian. Probably that's what this is. Um, uh, okay. So also the, the charging tariffs uh, that might be offered by um, the charging options that might be offered by a, a charging service provider may impact the um, the subsequent activity travel patterns so the, the activity travel patterns that follow the um, the charging opportunity so let's say in the in the gray option uh, you know the one uh, there might be uh, the opportunity to have a vehicle charge at a certain level but uh, um, that is lower than in the red option, but be charged faster uh, and be more, but be more expensive than the other option, than the red option. So an individual may choose to have a higher uh, target um, state of charge at the end of the charging operation uh, and decide to accept some scheduled delays, right? Uh, because it takes longer time. So essentially there is an interplay between charging choices and a, and uh, and um, time um, activity travel uh, um, patterns choices. Uh, um, so in this paper, we really uh, developed uh, um, or used a random utility framework that is explicitly capture the trade off uh, between um, in, in short term charging between target state of charge uh, cost and um, and charging duration that hinder or enable um, to use the vehicle as a flexible load. And they also capture the interplay between short-term choices and the, um, <clears throat> and the preference with regard to uh, departure time. Uh, and uh, so this was one of the first of the first papers that, was, um, that, that um, tried to use choice experiments uh, to try to identify the, the, the choice preference under um, smart charging. Huh? So this is um, uh, these are the contributions. So uh, probably I don't have to say anything uh, to you guys about random utility theory, but I always put this slide because. I, uh, but so essentially, we uh, uh, an individual. We assume that individual chooses charging uh, options that uh, by maximizing their own utility and. Uh, but um, and we assume that, that the charging provider provide a discrete set of charging options. So, uh, and uh, but as as analysts, we don't observe it. So we just observe the characteristics of the charging uh, alternative and the characteristic of the individual. And so we have to come up with some sort of specification for the utility. But the full utility is really unobservable. That's why we have an error term and. And you know all well how uh, different type of discrete mo choice models arise based on the specification of the error term. So uh, let's focus on the uh, specification of the systematic utility. So if uh, um, if the charging choice does not uh, imply any impact on the activity travel patterns that follow the charging choice, then it will be a simply a trade off between. Um, energy level, target energy level at the end of the charging operation, effective charging time and charging cost. In case uh, um, some charging alternative in, imply a, a charging time that makes, um, that exceed the, the usual um, dwell time at home, let's say if we consider uh, home charging and therefore induces a scheduled delay late, then we will have to, um, consider the impact, uh, the penalty on the 
um, rest of the activity travel patterns. In this study, we just consider uh, home-based tours, and the and we assume that uh, that the charging um, choice would uh, would occur at home, and and this is how we design the choice experiment to estimate. Uh, um, our our choice parameters and uh, and uh, essentially the experimental variables were the um, energy level at the end of the charging operation, the effective charging time, and the charging cost, as well as the activity travel patterns penalty, schedule delays, and and uh, part, um, basically participation activity participation and destination decrease, so the squeeze, the post potential squeeze of um, the activity at the destination, so after charging and, and doing the first leg of the trip. So the experimental design, so we have two types of choice experiments, uh, each consisting of 12 uh, repetitions. The first choice experiment is without impact on the activity travel pattern. The second choice experiment, in some choice situation, we have that the charging duration can exceed the, TP, uh, the preferred uh, departure time, so we have impact on the schedule, uh, on the on the on the travel patterns. So we set four levels for energy and four levels of duration, charging duration or schedule delays, and so on. And charging cost is based on three unit prices, and and for when he, we also consider four level of uh, uh, partic activity participation decrease in the second choice experiment, and we use the uh, um, efficient design to. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, uh, to design the choice experiment. So this is how it might look like. So by the way, we, we collect data, we collected travel diary data before. No, this we designed the choice experiments. Yeah, yes, we designed the choice experiment. So we, we and we, it was part of a larger data collection strategy. So the sample is quite small because it involves several, um, you know, making people sit down for 45 minutes to get and to collect essentially all the data. So, uh, and it's an SP survey. Yeah, so we had, uh, we collected the travel diary data, then uh, um, we did a stated adaptation to make them, to, to try to understand, to make them start thinking about uh, using NEV and charging and so on, because this was not necessarily uh, focused on um, electric vehicle drivers. This was for mainstream drivers. And then we have these 24 so, uh, choice experiments. So, um, and uh, the first type of choice experiment is this one. So uh, we, we show them one of their um, tour, on base tour, and we tell them, how would you charge before uh, undertaking this tour? And, uh, and uh, we varied the kind of battery level, the duration, and the charging cost. Mm -hmm. In the second choice experiment, not, I don't have it here in the slide, it's, uh, I can show it in the end if you're interested, because we some of the charging alternatives might need schedule delay, we have option to basically uh, absorb part of the schedule, schedule delay with the reduction of uh, time at the, at, the destina at, the, uh, at the destination activity, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so as I said, the sample was fairly small because uh, the, the data collection included travel diaries, stated adaptation exercise, and then stated several stated choice experiments. So it was delivering, was quite complex. It was delivered as a KPI, so, mm, sorry, KPI, and um, CAPI, a computer-aided personal interview with the interviewer present. Uh, um, and, but in the end, we had uh, 1,000, 1,000, observation per choice experiment. So here um, we, are, we estimated uh, a, a mixed logic model, for example, this is for the first choice experiment. So we see that most of the uh, mass of the marginal utility for target energy level at the end of the charging operation is positive, although we have uh, some mm, negative uh, mass, which is partly due to the fact that we we use the normal distribution for the for the coefficient, but also because in some cases where the for for people that that tour distance is very small, they weren't really um, having a proper compensatory behavior. They were just choosing the lowest cost uh, option. So that's why I think we observed that. 
if we look at the um, marginal the distribution of the marginal utility for the effective charging time, we see that there is a big, a big uh, variability in preference. And in this case, remember that the first choice experiment mm, doesn't impact the travel patterns, which means the charging duration is uh, at most long as uh, at most uh, um, doesn't so doesn't imply a, a late departure, so stays within the the preferred dwell time at all. So for some people, they, they wanted to charge as fast as possible. Others, again, they, uh, they didn't have uh, this preference. And this is actually a, um, quite a good chance that it's over 60%. This is to say, again, that there is a, um, ex um, quite a large variability in, uh, in, in how people want to have their vehicle charge, even though uh, um, this does not imply any scheduled delay. So some people might want it to, try to have it charged as fast as possible anyway, and have it there ready to go for the rest of the time. Other people don't mind and prefer longer charging time as long as they do not exceed the charging, uh, the, the, the departure time. If we make them exceed the departure time, of course, we, we infer that the schedule delay is going to see a very negative mass uh, as we expected uh, on the distribution for, for the marginal utility. Of, uh, of the schedule delay. Again, in the, um, whereas um, for the marginal utility of the um, energy at the end of the charging operation, we have a, uh, a big mass on the, on the positive side again, uh, and a small mass on the negative for those that still non, do not have a necessary compensatory behavior. So this is uh, essentially tells us that the, we shouldn't, we should consider these preferences because they may impact on, on the, the potential for smart charging because people might decide, even though they, uh, they are, their vehicle is parked for eight hours that they want to just have four hours for charging instead of the full eight hours. So, so this is important. How can you use these models? You can use these models in a simulation and then uh, obtain uh, <clears throat> essentially um, uh, charging profiles uh, that are more compliant with uh, with user preferences. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's that's essentially the um, the reason why we do that. So this is essentially the a bit of a um, presentation on the first part. In the second part, we we leave uh, drivers uh, at home and we consider um, share autonomous vehicle. In this case. Uh, the, the the choices uh, for for charging that the, the that a fleet operator has to make are basically related on trying to maximize uh, um, their profit. And here we we um, we use a um, multi-agent um, uh, reinforcement learning approaches to uh, for for smart charging decision. But it's multi-agent but cooperative because uh, we allow. Um, we, we basically um, shape the reward function in a way that, that the individual agents are not selfish, but they work towards uh, improving the, the overall fleet operator profit. So the, the, we know the benefit, the brief of introduction benefit from uh, shared autonomous vehicles. So improvement of uh, air quality because they are uh, electric and because uh, uh, they are shared if they if if they are used with ride sharing, um, reduction of the CO2 emissions um, if the uh, if the power system is uh, is electrified. Uh, more controversial are uh, is the statement that we have a potential reduction of traffic because uh, if we reduce if if uh, there are cost reduction, you might have induced uh, um, demand and so. But you know. Mm -hmm. Some studies show that, that you can also have potential reduction of traffic, improvement of traffic safety, and so on. So these are generic um, uh, potential benefits. Uh, in order to, um, to obtain them, though, we need to deploy and manage these, uh, these fleets. And so, and there are, we're well aware that there are several management challenges at a strategic capital level, fleet sizing, charge infrastructure deployment, and so on. And also, uh, we need to understand how to operate in the most efficient and profitable manner 
um, display. So, uh, and, uh, and the operations, uh, the operations problem, which is the one where we focus now, um, uh, are vapor standard mass charging and, and repositioning. Where repositioning, I mean, in rebalancing the, the fleet. And this, this paper specifically focuses on, on uh, using reinforcement learning for smart charging. Although we have to model all three um, type of decision. And uh, the key contribution is uh, we focus on charging decision for share autonomous vehicle. We consider uncertainty in future demand, uh, time varying electricity pricing and capacitated charging infrastructure. I have to point out the last point because sometimes in this, um, in the in the literature, uh, um, the, the cap, um, you know charging infrastructure uh, is not necessarily considered uh, with capacity constraints. So, and we address scalability using cooperative multi-agent reinforcement learning. What do I mean? We address scalability. So, in order uh, for, to, to achieve um, uh, smart charging strategies for. Uh, uh, fleet that are of realistic size, it's uh, uh, the, 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 and considering uncertainty and future demand, we have the stochastic dynamic stabilization problems that become very large, even using single agent reinforcement learning is, is a challenge. Here, we use uh, multi agent reinforcement learning as a, uh, the composition heuristic essentially. And uh, but this cooperative because we make them cooperate using the reward function. Um, the, data, uh, the, the, the policies are evaluated using uh, um, agent-based simulation that was calibrated using data from ShareNow in Berlin. And, uh, and we compare uh, the performance with an upper bound, which is essentially a fleet of uh, uh, autonomous combustion engine vehicles, so they don't have recharge as much. And uh, with two benchmark models, a central reinforcement learning, and of course, in this case, we have to limit the size of the fleet uh, in order to make it um, doable, and a uh, re-optimization approach. And we also provide in this paper some uh, managerial insight. So I said that uh, we have to, while we focus on charging, we have to model also the other decision. The, the vehicle assignment decisions, uh, which means matching the supply and demand, is the, is, is the only decision that is taken at the fleet level. And, uh, and basically, um, we solve it uh, uh, in two minutes time window. Um, <clears throat> uh, we basically um, match demand and supply, um, trying to maximize the profit uh, of, of the fleet. So this is the, uh, and then the, the, the decision at the, uh, at the vehicle level, so the decentralized one, are the final decision in which we apply our uh, cooperative charging uh, learning approach. And then um, we have for repositioning and parking, we have um, heuristic uh, approaches. So for instance, for uh, relocation, for repositioning, which means rebalancing, we move uh, if uh, the vehicle is not called to serve a trip, uh, uh, we move it to um, if any if is an area where there is more supply than demand, we move it to the closest area where the 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 imbalance is uh, reversed. Um, otherwise, if there is no uh, imbalance, mm, uh, we 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 send it to the parking uh, to the closest parking. Note that the this this cascade of decision is in this order and and is triggered by. Uh, when each vehicle terminates serving a trip. So uh, the, the, the fleet assignments matches the trip, then uh, um, the vehicles, um, if it has enough charge, serves the trip. And then at the end of the trip, we will decide whether to charge, whether to reposition or to park and, and to park in this in these, um, sequence. And also, each of these decisions can be interrupted uh, if, uh, if the vehicle has enough charge to serve some of the, uh, of the demand. So um, let's focus on the charges, on the comparative learning. So here we have um, the fleet state is characterized by uh, the vehicle mode, whether it's idols, is serving a trip, is, is, is on way to reposition, queue, charge, or is en route. Um, to pick up uh, a trip, essentially. 
this the estos two, the state of charge located in time. So this this data for each vehicle uh, in the fleet uh, correspond to the to the state of the fleet, and the action phase for each vehicle is uh, um, essentially whether to charge and where to go charging. Essentially, the the uh, C1, C2, and C3 are the stations that that. He, he could go uh, charging, and of course he has zero because if the vehicle decides not to charge, that's that's part of the action. Um, and so um, agent J, uh, given the system state, the takes action AJ following a certain policy, uh, and therefore we have our uh, mark of uh, <clears throat> um, mark of decision process with a transition probability. Uh, to the next state as prime that is uh, conditional on the current state and, uh, and the action undertaken. And then uh, if we are action A, we are moving the system from uh, state S to state uh, S prime, agent G receives uh, uh, a certain reward. Mm -hmm. So, and, and basically we can then define the, the action state value function for our, our problem, which basically uh, um, is what we want to maximize. So we want to learn policies that maximize essentially um, this value, uh, uh, and uh, and therefore making um, uh, optimal decisions. So now, in order to increase the scalability of the problem, not only we consider a decentralized approach, but also we use mean field uh, approximation. So. We assume that the vehicle uh, will only consider in calculating the Q value for the agent, we only consider local vehicles, neighboring vehicles, local demand, and local charging stations. So that also speeds up the, 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 the model essentially. And uh, to ensure cooperation, we, uh, we use uh, penalties in the, in the reward function. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think this this was uh, we did a bit of uh, um, um, sensitivity analysis essentially. Yeah. Um, so and the reward. Uh, so, so we in order to ensure the cooperation because this is a decentralized approach, so we avoid the selfishness of the vehicle. We we include a penalty. Huh? So for for each vehicle in a certain area where a trip is uh, uh, unsatisfied. Uh, and uh, they are considered responsible if uh, their state of charge is high and they decided to go charging anyway, or if they, uh, their state of charge was low and they decide not to charge. So that's, that's how um, we, uh, we assign the penalties. Also, uh, in fact, the problem uh, is, um, uh, event-based reinforcement learning approaches because the, the problem is actually a semi-Markov uh, problem because uh, each decision is triggered at the end of a trip. So which is basically uh, each single vehicle have a different start time for the decision. Um, also action have stochastic durations and so on. So we need to take this into account. And, um, and therefore we need to, uh, we, and also each action includes several tasks, which also have a duration. So we include, we, we consider this basically discounting the reward uh, over their duration. And also we discount um, um, the Q value over the duration of the action. So uh, for the numerical experiment, as I said, we use uh, agent-based uh, simulation that is calibrated using share now data. Here it shows a bit the the, uh, the profile uh, of, the, of the demand, which is considered completely exogenous, yeah? And uh, also the charging station location is considered exogenous. This was derived from another, essentially, um, another um, paper that um, um, uh, um, another approach for sizing and sizing uh, charging infrastructure. But, um, uh, so, so this was also exogenous. <clears throat> Uh, so each episode uh, is five days, uh, the zones are hexagons, and we have a number of charging stations and so on. So, so this can, the, the details are, are essentially in, in, the, in the paper. I won't go into this. 
here I want to show you uh, essentially the, the performances and how they compare with our benchmarks. So, so we have uh, uh, two of our proposed approach. One is multi-agent dynamic charging that uses uh, Q deep Q networks to learn. The other is uh, using Q learning. Yeah? And um, uh, the, as I said, the, the upper bound is this one is basically a split of uh, non EVs. And uh, the benchmarks are a link optimization approach that essentially minimizes uh, the charging time with high penalties for a mass charging demand, and uh, and is essentially this um, uh, the, the the line, the green line here. Um, and uh, and then we also compare it with a single agent dynamic charging, which should be the mm, the best amongst the the mm, mm, reinforcement learning approaches, but has got scalability problem. As you can see, after uh, uh, you know fifteen epochs, uh, all the the, the, the multi agent reinforcement learning approach uh, reach. Uh, um, uh, are, are get quite close to the. Uh, to the performance of the upper bound, although they not really reach it, but uh, and they are much uh, faster than the um, than the single uh, the single. They are quite faster than the single agent approach. Yeah, so this is essentially uh, what we were really looking uh, for. And um, as uh, as numerical insight, so this is basically this was the objective to so develop the. The approach for operational management, but it turns out that once you have the uh, uh, agent-based model and the uh, and the uh, uh, operational management approach, you can uh, try to look uh, try to answer also other questions that are more uh, tactical or, or strategic. So, for instance, here we see the distribution how you increase the the um, size of uh, of the fleet, and we see that of course the contagious size of the fleet. The state of charge becomes uh, uh, over time for all vehicles becomes very flat, and, and essentially this tells you that uh, you could uh, the larger something that is somewhat obvious, but that so the larger the fleet you can keep, uh, um, uh, you could uh, have vehicles that have a uh, um, smaller um, battery essentially. And also, what's interesting is that uh, the smaller the fleet. Uh, there are some preferred charging stations. The larger the fleet, the, the, the distribution of the charging stations is more where, where people go to charge, where, where not people, these are not people, where agents, uh, vehicle agents go to charge is, is more flat. Whereas uh, for, for uh, when you have fewer vehicles, there are some preferred uh, charging stations. And it turns out there is another, mm, uh, it's, this is shown in the paper, but not here, that the preferred charging stations during the day are are fast charging and overnight are are slower um, are slower charging. So these are essentially um, to give you a bit of a, uh, an overview of uh, of uh, the type of two, two uh, let's say an area of research that I'm looking to that they have to do with integration of uh, uh, transportation and uh, and energy systems. And um, one has to do with behavior, the other has to do with operations of this system. And um, my current work, or what I'm, I want to do now, is basically join the, the two uh, um, streams of research using the uh, choice-based operation management for integrated uh, electric mobility. So choice-based uh, uh, operations management is uh, widely used in assortment optimization in retail for revenue management of airlines and pricing of delivery slots for um, e-fulfillment for, for home deliveries, for example. However, the use of this type of approach for operational management of uh, um, um, charging, so on grid integrated e-mobility is still quite scarce. And in fact, uh, uh, I, I know only of one work using uh, choice-based optimization for um, managing uh, parking and charging. However, 
they are up, I imagine the application is uh, uh, is quite suitable, especially for the identification of uh, of uh, profitable strategies for public channel infrastructure that mm, right now don't really make any money, so they are not profitable uh, for the management. Uh, of demand uh, in, in case of charging infrastructure scarcity, that is always going to be there. In my view, we won't have a charger per vehicle. Right now, I think uh, even uh, um, considering uh, um, all the subsidies, there will be one one charger every one public charger every twenty vehicles. Um, uh, this is an estimation by by the IEA in the, for the US and also. You know, looking at the share autonomous vehicle uh, strategies, there in 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 my uh, in our work we consider the demand as purely exogenous. But you know we could endogenize. You know, and part of the demand is actually um, endogenous, especially if you consider the the um, that people might reject uh, 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 the preference for for uh, um, waiting for for a for a vehicle. And uh, the variability in preference of waiting for a vehicle. In our case, we just used a, a threshold in which we, uh, above a certain threshold, we just consider the trip loss, but this is not a thing. And using search pricing, so use a choice business finalization to use for, for search pricing for, for um, rebalancing of share autonomous vehicles. So this is uh, it. I think I talked for maybe too long. Uh, and uh, I hope um, you know this was of interest, and if you if you have uh, anything you want to ask uh, now or uh, later, if you think about it, uh, and drop me an email, it's all fine. Mm. I mean, uh, through pricing, for example, no? Yeah, I mean, uh, I can, uh, I can, as a charging service operator, I can give you, I can discretize some of the charging options. So, and in discretize the, the the energy dimension and the time dimension, and and provide uh, different prices uh, based on on what either maximizes my revenue. Or uh, based on, you know, if if my objective function is uh, reduce the CO two emissions, for instance, if I am a, a public service and so on. So. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, That's that's a very important uh, objection. So, uh, okay, the the easiest way is through error. What is typically done is through pricing. But the truth is that there is a, a big scope for research to uh, um, try to use uh, include uh, um, to identify a way to um, essentially incentivize people to change their behavior that they are not used that do not use pricing so one way that um, i've been looking at is is uh, is essentially using uh, um, community based type of approaches we call it the digital social market and we have we have a paper we publish a paper still with my, some colleagues at imperial college in which Essentially, in this case, it doesn't have anything to do with the electric mobility. It has to do with incentivizing people, for instance, to walk more uh, instead of uh, using the car and so on. And uh, so we use the, um, this, this, uh, this was part of a trial in which there was an app that was sending the, um, um, suggestion to people to reduce their, uh, or reduce their car use or increase their, they are walk, 
um, they are, you know, the, the use of uh, active modes. And uh, if they did, they would receive, uh, they would receive uh, an incentive, a positive incentive, which was a sort of a token, not, uh, not money itself. But this token was actually provided by involving the local business community, uh, um, uh, where then that token could be, so, so for instance, they would, uh, for corporate social responsibility, local business would, uh, would provide some sort of funding to generate this token that then could be translated into, um, into uh, uh, um, funding for charity. So people would gain this token, then they would give it back, they could give it back only uh, to local charities and local uh, NGOs and so on. So there are ways, and um, I'm not saying this is easy. And, uh, and uh, there was also uh, in parallel, another trial uh, like this that had to do with uh, uh, demand response in, uh, um, uh, for, for residential e electricity use. Not, on, not, about, not anymore about transport or uh, active mode, but basically reduce their energy consumption at certain time. And in, that, in this case, we didn't give money directly, we, we gave points in a similar, in a similar way. Um, it's not that, uh, that easy. There are alternatives. I'm very interested in, in studying them more. Uh, and uh, but of course they involve uh, trials, they involve apps. And one one effect that is important is actually that these, these apps in which you receive or give the point um, are are based on on so so they also connect people in the local community. So people other people see when you do something that is good, and this might also incentivize. The implementation for revenue money, I mean, for these kind of things, I'm not saying that is easy or, or I have a, 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 a straightforward solution to it. Hmm. Yeah, so that there is there is a problem of the sustainability of the business model. But I think and, and if, uh, if local community get involved, local NGOs and and especially local authorities, uh, uh, then uh, for for certain things it can work for. Uh, uh, I'm not sure you can really use it, for instance, to for traffic control, for example. But uh, you may still incentivize broadly uh, uh, behavior that that are uh, uh, you know that are good uh, for for um, for for the community essentially. Yeah, yeah. So the reason why so we, we needed to uh, have data about demand and 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 for for share uh, mobility autonomous electric vehicles. So what we used uh, we used uh, uh, we used data uh, from a share mobility provider, which of course doesn't use autonomous vehicles, right? Uh, and and of course uh, the demand patterns might be different. Uh, because as I said before, if, if the, the service is significantly cheaper because you get mm, for, for whatever reason, uh, uh, because it's electric or, or yeah, then you, you, the, the demand patterns might change slightly. But this is the, the best, uh, the, the, the most similar thing we could have. 
but um, yeah, so so that was just to uh, the 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 data was just to essentially generate the demand for our agent based uh, model for trips, the demand for trips. But I suppose uh, you could use. Uh, um, other uh, simulation platform. Uh, mm, yeah, that's that's a good point. Maybe the the title share mobility wasn't. Um, yes. So, yeah, I think uh, I think that that could be uh, considered. Uh, but mm. 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 Yeah, 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 that, that's for sure. Yeah. Different demand patterns. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, without, I mean, uh, yeah, the temporal makes sense. Maybe the, the distances and, uh, and the duration of, of the trip. Uh, uh, might might be might be different. Yeah, that's that's actually a good point. Mm. 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 Yeah, I mean yes. I guess that we we use the the best uh, proxy we had, but this is a good point. The reviewers didn't complain particularly, so. The, the paper is uh, is uh, coming out soon. You're doing the proof now. But yeah, that's the yeah, and that's that's actually a good point. So that there may be we may be we may see a different factor. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, the value, the value of uh, the value of charging duration, the value of state of charge, the willingness to pay, and this kind of thing. Yeah, um, so I think uh, essentially uh, you can. Uh, I don't think we we did calculate the willingness to pay, but it's something that that um, on a on a part of this data set I did it for 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 my PhD. Now I don't have the the value uh, out of of uh, of my uh, of my head, but yes, you definitely can calculate because we have uh, we have the uh, the coefficient for uh, the the price for the cost, and we have uh, the other coefficient, so you can. You can calculate the the marginal the the marginal willingness to pay for uh, <clears throat> for uh, the state of charge and the end of the charging operation and also uh, for the charging duration and as well the value of the um, of time for the scheduled delays and so on. So we, yeah. Yeah. Um, we didn't consider uh, income to specify the the, the um, uh, systematic heterogeneity. What we did consider was variability in their uh, uh, travel patterns. So if the next trip was longer or shorter, and uh, the the trip after so it's the tour after charging was longer and shorter. So in that case, changes the value of the state of charge. For example, uh, we used them. Um, uh, um, and uh, I think I have, I think I have, I added uh, an appendix here. Uh, 
So, yeah, age, uh, the employment, we didn't have the, 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 the income, I think, but we had whether the employee was employed full time. So you have some effect uh, and the distance and, and so on. So, yes, there are. And this is for the first uh, choice experiments. And also we have for the, for the uh, second choice experiment, for instance, we have the second choice experiment that part of the systematic uh, um, heterogeneity in the schedule delay, uh, dependent on again on the travel distance after, on whether they were charging, uh, were, they were traveling at peak time, of whether they said we also collected some data how flexible or inflexible are your travel patterns. So we use that we had an indicator there uh, as well. Yeah. So we. Uh, Yes, some were, were not all significant. So some I show uh, there are, and, and I discussed it in the paper. I didn't, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, so that's, I'll show you. So this is the second choice experiment. The second choice experiment, uh, so the, the the charging duration may last longer than their preferred um, departure time. So we still have the first part, but then you have other options. So if, if there was a schedule delay, for instance, uh, in this case, uh, um, there, is, uh, um, there is a little bubble. In some cases, in some cases uh, um, so when there is a schedule delay, we um, we basically allow either to keep the schedule delays until the end of the day or to squeeze uh, to a certain level the the activity uh, in between the, the activity in the middle of the tour essentially so uh, and so you you have uh, more options there so here we have uh, the target matter bubble, which is the, the state of charge at the end of the charging operation, when the time will, at what time the vehicle will be fully charged, mm -hmm. and, uh, and also which is related to the duration, because, yeah. And then, so, and then we have the cost. And then in, the, in some cases, uh, uh, there might be a, a schedule delay, and when there is a schedule delay, uh, um, you will, uh, uh, you might have uh, uh, essentially an uh, option to uh, reduce your uh, the duration of the activity at the destination. So these are all the, the options. You don't see it very well here, but because the. Oh, but in this case, this is not an autonomous vehicle, right? So what do you, what do you mean, said my vehicle? Or... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think I got your, your, your objective. Here, yes, here, because we could only, um, we wanted to define the, the choice experiments using uh, a discrete, set of alternative, we couldn't really present, discretize all the possible options. We made, we gave uh, uh, um, an individual um, two alternatives and, and we decide which one is the best for you in order to, to capture the, 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 pre, the, um, the trade-offs that we were interested in. So in some cases, we could argue that these choices were a bit forced and so you might you might have some uh, uh, bias due to the hypothetical situation, but um, that's that's how we designed the the experiment. So yes, in the real world, you could consider that the, the charging service provider may give you options that are very um, that are based on 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 you have still discrete options, but 
they are closer to uh, um, to what would be if you had uh, the possibility to regulate continuously when you want the vehicle fully charged and how long you want to have it. Yeah. I don't know if I kind of answered your question. This is how I interpret it. Yeah, yes, yeah, so that's that's how we, we did it through a child's experiment. Mm. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Oh, yeah, so I always forget the, the, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, there are three points. Have you considered the impact of an open reservation system? No, uh, we, uh, we, we haven't. So, so, and I'm not sure that the person is. Okay. Yes, yeah, so, so we yeah. haven't. So here they say an um, open reservation system charging parking is part of street planning to minimize queuing for charging. I don't know if this were referring to the second, uh, 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 because here we are talking in the, in the chart experiment, we just consider home charging. And so we assume that they had a home charger. So in the second, uh, in the second paper, um, essentially the, we, the, the, we dealt the, the the, so we had uh, a strategies for queuing that the lowest, uh, the vehicle with the lowest charge would charge first. So lowest charge first thing in the charger. So we dealt to the queue in the queue in this way. Thank you very much for uh, listening and thank you for. Uh,